guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video. And today, uh, I am going to be talking about all the books that I have currently read that Book Talk has made me read. Some of these books I have already recommended and others I have not. <laughs> so you may see a few new ones. Um, and some have been good, whereas some of them have been bad. I have seven that I want to talk about today, um, two I have physically, and uh, those are the two that you saw in the thumbnail. Um, but before we get into that, I want to know, uh, are any of the books that I talk about in this video books that you've read because of Book Talk? And if not, what books have you guys read that you that Book Talk has recommended you guys? Okay, I want to know because quite honestly, I've been a little slack reading some of the books that I see on my For You page, but I'm trying to get there. Um, nevertheless, let's get right into the video. Okay, the first one I have on my list is Come Closer by Sarah Gran. This is about a woman who we essentially watch as she is possessed. This book and then the book directly after this book are two that I read for the Trick or Treat-a-thon, um, which if you haven't seen that vlog, go ahead and check it out. Um, but I gave this two stars. I have just uh, come to the conclusion that I am not a fan of possession stories. I'm a very suspicious person myself and pretty much in every either possession story or story involving paranormal activity, there's always that one person and it's either a side character really close to the main character that the main character always goes to for advice or it's the main character themselves that never believes what is happening is paranormal in nature or never even bothers to entertain the notion that it could possibly be paranormal in nature and that's just not logical to me um but that's again coming from someone who uh has to knock on wood i got this book off of a most disturbing books that i read in a week or, or something like that and all i have to say about this book is it's not disturbing or at least not for me i found it mildly infuriating the second one that i read for the trick-or-treat-a-thon uh is a little bit better it's things have gotten worse since we last spoke by eric laroca laroca i'm not too sure how you pronounce the last name this is about two women who meet on this website and they strike up a conversation and in turn a relationship which then downward spirals incredibly quickly with the help of some very very interesting shenanigans. I gave it three stars. One star up from Come Closer, but still not disturbing, I would say. This, again, was on the list of most disturbing books. And this one wasn't disturbing. This one was just more gross, if that makes sense. I mean, there is some really disgusting imagery in it. There is... Um, uh, some questionable actions taken if you're looking for uh, horror or disturbing books that don't involve animal cruelty I wouldn't pick this up uh, or just animal death in general I wouldn't pick this up because I know that is something that a lot of horror uh, fans do look for it does have LGBTQIA plus representation in it so you know if that makes you want to read this then go ahead this book wasn't horrible it just wasn't amazing it was just kind of meh it was just like, like if a belly flop was a book, if that makes any sense. The next book that I want to talk to you guys about is Almond by Won Pyong Sun. This is about Yun Jae and he has a brain condition called alexithemia where it makes it hard for him to decipher emotions. People with alexithemia often know that they are experiencing an emotion, but they don't necessarily know what that emotion is. Um, in Yun Jae's case, he doesn't necessarily feel fear or anger. His mother and his grandmother have to, you know, um, put up sticky notes all over their house in order to be like, this is when you say thank you, this is when you smile, this is when you laugh, you know, this is when you feel fear. And, uh, you know, his grandmother and his mother help him pretty much up until he's 16 when a horrific act of violence basically shatters their family and leaves Yun Jae basically out in the open. And he makes this friend with a really disruptive student named Gon who basically ends up changing his life. 
I gave this five stars. I read this plainly because uh, Yoongi or Suga from BTS was reading it and I absolutely adored this. I think it is an amazing story um, and it left me ponderous for a couple days, all right? It's very short, so um, if you're looking for a quick rainy day read, I would totally pick this up. Um, if you're looking for a translated work, because um, I know I was in a phase of picking up just translated works, uh, this will be this would also be a very good thing to pick up. I think it also is very uh, good at representing uh, alexithemia in general. I just think it dissects the theme of family and the theme of coming into one's own so well. Next two are kind of together, um, and that is the Ice Planet Barbarians series books one and two. This series is a lot. Basically, this series is about uh, these human women who get abducted by these Martian-esque aliens and their cargo ship basically breaks off and they are stranded on this ice planet where uh, our main character for the first book, Georgie, goes out to try and find help and she stumbles across this big blue alien who is the leader of his tribe and uh, he, you know, they fall in love with each other. And basically the whole series is each book being dedicated to each one of the women finding her mate or her alien. I liked the first book, I'm not going to lie. I gave the first book four stars. Uh, I had an enjoyable time reading it, I was entertained. Um, I cannot, however, say the same for the second one. The second one was absolutely terrible. I gave the second one, Barbarian Alien, one star. I have a rant review up for this one on my channel if you'd like to go check that out. I think it was one of the worst books that I read last year, I think. This is one of this is one of the few books that I can genuinely say I hate. This isn't my favorite Ruby Dixon series. I'd have to say my favorite book by Ruby Dixon is The King's Spinster Bride, which I read last year and is one of my favorite books from last year. So if you're looking for a Ruby Dixon book to try, I would recommend The King's Spinster Bride and maybe Ice Planet Barbarians. Just skip the second book. The next one that I want to talk about is The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. This is basically a manual on how to be cunning, how to get power and keep power for those who want power, right? And I don't know what I expected Honestly, uh, this is for, you know, people who are fans of Machiavelli, Sun Tzu, um, Napoleon. It's written in a very interesting format for maybe the first 10 laws, and then you get further and further, and it's the same format over and over again. Some of the laws are very self-explanatory, so it's just like, I understand why I'm I understand why this law is a thing, but I don't understand why I'm reading so much about it. You know, it was just very long-winded at some points, and I felt like it was just writing to be written, if that makes sense. So I think it's good for fans of history and just history buffs in general, but I would warn those that want to pick this up that it is very repetitive and it does have a format which if you're not too invested in the subject matter that you're being given it will seem boring okay so i gave it three stars not a horrible book but not a great book at the same time the next one that i want to talk about is another one of my favorite books of 2021 oh goodness it's 2022 holy shit Another book the book talk has forced upon me, um, and to be quite honest, I am grateful, okay? Because this one turned out to be one of my favorite books of last year, and that is Iron Widow by Shiran J. Zhao. This is a Chinese-inspired uh, science fiction book where humanity is battling giant aliens with giant robots. It's a Chinese Pacific Rim. I love it. And um, these robots are piloted by a man and a woman and their respective chis. But the woman's chi is lesser or more submissive than the man's. And so pretty much after every battle, the woman dies. And so that is why every 
uh, pilot has his own uh, set basically of concubines so that for every battle he can come in and pick one that he likes, um, take her to battle, she'll die, he can come back, spend the rest of the time with his concubines, another battle will come, he'll pick another concubine, and then it's just an, a never-ending cycle. And Wu Zetian, our main character, is enlisting into the military in order to become a concubine for one of the most famous pilots because she thinks that he killed her sister. Who was, a, who was one of his concubines. So she's on a mission to murk his ass. All right, I gave this five stars. I don't think I can stop gushing about this book. Um, I have a pretty uh, sporadic uh, review up for this book if you'd like to go check that out too. Um, but yeah, I absolutely loved this book. The action scenes were spectacular. Um, and there's a thruple in here, all right? This was pitched to me on TikTok as, do you like love triangles? Yes. Do you like reverse harem? Yes. This has a thruple with a girl at the center. And I, I was first in line to be signed up. I needed this in my hand and once I got it, I read it, I loved it. I read this for the Pokemonathon. I think this was my favorite book that I read during that vlog, but nevertheless, I absolutely love this book. I cannot wait for the sequel to come out and I think if you're a science fiction fan, you'll really like this. Or just a Pacific Rim fan in general or a giant monster fan, which I am both. The last book that I wanna talk about that Book Talk has recommended to me is kind of bleak. However, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Uh, and that is Johnny Got His Gun by Dalton Trumbo. This is about a boy who gets conscripted into World War I and is hit with an artillery shell and he loses his arms, his legs, and there's a huge cavity where his face would have been so he doesn't have eyes, he doesn't have a nose, he doesn't have a mouth, he doesn't have ears. He is a sack of flesh with consciousness being kept alive by machines. And it's all about him coming to terms with just how injured he is and uh, him recollecting the horrors of war. I gave this four stars. This book absolutely left me shattered. I remember I listened to it on audiobook and whoever narrated this audiobook needs a damn raise ASAP. All right, because holy shit, the, the, the fear and the anger and the sadness that bleeds off of this book is utterly horrifying and just gut-wrenching. And I honestly recommend the audiobook more than I think just like the physical book, just because I feel like it caters more towards the chaotic atmosphere of this book in general, uh, because the audiobook completely gives you all of the jarring uh, sensory attacks uh, and just everything. And I feel like the true emotion of this book is expertly conveyed through the uh, talent of the audiobook narrator, all right? This book was hard to read, all right? It was genuinely very hard to get through. Uh, I remember I had to take a break and I just broke down. I cried. I don't know if this is more disturbing as in like body horror, graphic, gory disturbing. This is more just like emotionally scarring, <laughs> okay? So I guess if that's up your alley, then go for it. Just be mindful of what you're reading, okay? Because this is a very tough book to get through, but I think it's a very good book to get through. And I think it is a very important topic to be talking about because I think this was used on the lines of like the Vietnam War protests because this is like the first solid anti-war novel and just wow did it do it amazingly. So you guys those were all of the books that TikTok has made me read so far. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys can take some good recommendations from this video. Uh, there may be some books on here that I didn't like that you guys may like. Shoot, for all I know, you guys could love Come Closer or Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. Or for all I know, you guys could not love Iron Widow or Almond, but I loved them, okay? And I really can only hope that you guys have good reading experiences all around. So you guys, with that being said, I hope that you've enjoyed, that you will tune into the next video, and that you guys will have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.